Here's a quick review of linear two-port network theorems, specifically Thevenin's and Norton's theorems. First, what's a two-port linear electrical network? First of all, it must have two ports, one of which may be ground. Inside the network may be any combination of linear circuit elements, including resistors, capacitors, inductors, or independent or linearly dependent voltage or current sources. These may be connected in any way. Parallel combinations, series combinations, anything's possible. The purpose of Thevenin's theorem is to break up the analysis of a complex circuit. So starting with a complex network, if we can create a partition A that is a linear two-port electrical network, Using Thevenin's theorem, we can replace A by a simplified network consisting of only a voltage source Vt and an impedance Zt in series. Obviously, we've simplified the network A considerably in this model. We've no longer got any of its internal nodes or current. But the analysis of the overall circuit is exactly the same as we had before. That is, all the voltages and currents that we would calculate inside of B using this simplified model are the same as we would get if we analyzed the original complex circuit, including the voltages and currents at nodes A and A prime here. In order to make this simplification, we need to find the voltage Vt and the impedance Zt. And Thevenin's theorem tells us how. Step one is to find Vt. And we do so by creating an open circuit at the ports A, A prime and analyze the resulting network to find the voltage Vt. Step two is to find Zt. We do so by setting all independent sources inside A to zero. Independent sources include voltage sources and current sources. Now setting a voltage source to zero volts is just like replacing it with a short circuit. Setting a current source to zero amps is just like replacing it with an open circuit. So that's what we do. We take all the voltage sources in A, replace them with short circuits, all the current sources, replace them with open circuits. That is, we set all the independent sources to zero. Note that any independent source or any dependent sources inside A can remain unchanged for this part of the analysis. Having done that replacement, we then apply a test source at the ports A and A prime. For example, a test voltage source Vx and find the resulting current Ix. Then Zt is just the ratio Vx over Ix. We can also apply a test current and find the resulting voltage. Note that in general, because Zt can be complex valued, this may have to be a phasor analysis and the result frequency dependent. Having, having done this, we can now replace A with its Thevenin equivalent, Vt and Zt as shown here. Again, any currents or voltages inside B that we compute with the simplified model are the same as we would have gotten by analyzing the original circuit. Norton's theorem is similar except that the equivalent source replacing A is comprised of a current source IN in parallel with the impedance ZN. In order to find the Norton equivalent, first we must find the current source value IN. This is done by placing a short circuit between the two ports A and A prime of the linear two port A. With those two nodes shorted, we then find the resulting current, IN. Step two is to find the impedance ZN. This is done in very much the same way as finding the impedance ZT for the Thevenin equivalent. We start by setting all the independent sources in A to zero. That is, voltage sources are replaced with short circuits, current sources are replaced with open circuits. Again, dependent voltage and 
current sources can remain just as they are. Having done that, we apply our test source at the two ports, for example, a voltage source Bx, and find the resulting current Ix. And Zn is the ratio Bx over Ix, just as before. Just to be totally clear, this is exactly the same as the procedure for the Thevenin equivalent. The theorems tell us that we can replace any linear two port with its Thevenin or Norton equivalent. Now, obviously, Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits are themselves linear two ports, so that means we should be able to translate one into the other directly. Let's consider the Norton equivalent of the Thevenin circuit A, top left. In order to find its Norton equivalent, step one was to find the short circuit current. And we can do that by taking A and replacing B with the short circuit. The resulting current that flows is IN, and it's obviously equal to VT over ZT. Step two would be to find the output impedance of the network A. So to do this, we take all the independent sources inside A, replace them with zero. In this case, there's one independent source, and that's VT. So if we set that to zero, it's equivalent to replacing the voltage source with a short circuit. Then we find the equivalent impedance looking back into the two port. Without even doing the analysis, it's clear that the resulting impedance is simply ZT. So Norton and Thevenin equivalents can be translated one directly to the other by simply recognizing that VT equals IN times ZT and that the impedances for the Thevenin and Norton equivalents are the same.